Hello, everyone. I'm Gary McLean. You're watching Talent Talk. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Um, today, we will be announcing the winner of the co-host contest, uh, but we're going to save that for a little later. So, you know, you guys might have to stick around for a while and uh, wait to hear when we post that, because I'm not telling you when either. So stick around. Check it out. Um, also, just a reminder for the folks that are watching that this is live and interactive. Um, so please comment, say hi, ask questions, whatever you're feeling, throw it down in the comment section and we'll have a look at it. The reason you're here, today's guest is a professional audio book narrator, voiceover artist and actor, and has a home recording studio in Vancouver, BC. Uh, she's a narrator and producer for Centropic Oracle, a short sci-fi fantasy audio fiction podcast, and is also co-producing and starring in Sojourn, a science fiction audio drama. In 2013, Larissa began her on-screen acting career in Calgary in the indie film scene and played the role of Gwen in the first season of the award-winning web series One Hit Die. And for folks that may not be familiar with that show, I definitely recommend checking it out, um, especially if you are into any sort of video games or role-playing or anything like that. It's a fun show to watch. Um, she also co-produced the web series Sham Therapy, which we'll definitely chat on a little bit, uh, where she plays the constant cosplayer Taylor Smith. So please join me in welcoming Larissa Thompson. Hi. Morning, Larissa. How you doing? Morning, Gary. I'm doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad weather outside, which is nice. Yeah. Yay. Can't complain for November, you know, end of November. <laughs> So I'm, I'm okay with that. How's it in the West Coast? Uh, today we are surprisingly sunny. It's been kind of drizzly and moody and mysterious for a few weeks, but we got a nice burst of sunshine today, so I'm going to go for a walk later. Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, sounds like a good plan. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm sorry for uh, dragging you out at uh, uh, 10 in the morning. Um. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Woe is me. Right? I, I don't know if you're a morning person or not. I'm generally not. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I say I'm a morning person, but my behavior does not demonstrate beha a morning person mentality. Right. Fair enough. So is that coffee or? Water. It is water. Okay. Are you a coffee person? No, I despise coffee with every fiber of my being. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't really partake in the coffee either. I'm a tea guy. Yeah. Tea is far, uh, far more preferable. And then I, I drink water quite frequently. It's probably for the best, honestly. Nice and healthy. <laughs> it is. Um, so let's let's have a little chat. You're you're actually originally from Calgary, right? Were you born and raised? Uh, no, I was born in Vancouver, raised in Calgary, and then I moved back to Vancouver um, in 2015. Um, and uh, when I moved to Vancouver, I realized, oh, this is actually kind of home for me. Um, but uh, there's still a little part of me that's like, you know, I'm still an Alberta girl. Okay, well that's fair, and. So in that case, then, because, um, of course, you went to high school here and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, was it always a plan of yours to kind of move to Vancouver? Like, when you were you in high school going out yeah, when I graduate, I'm going to move to Vancouver and um, get no, my I acting was... career launched? And <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to be an actor in high school, um, but I didn't know where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do. I was thinking L.A., but I was just you know, thinking, oh, I'll become a big fish in a small pond in Calgary, and then I'll go, you know, where the wind takes me. Um, but after after a year, I was like, I think I want to move to Vancouver. You know, that's where all of the, the big shows that I want to act in work. Um, and my I had family out here, so it just made a lot of sense. Okay. Um, it's more like it, your parents are still in Calgary, though. Is that correct? Um, my mom ended up moving out to BC with me to be okay. closer to, our, to her family because um, they're the ones that are all uh, in the Vancouver area. Um, and then my dad is actually now on Vancouver Island. He moved out a few years after. Okay. So yeah, it's you're, you're everybody's in Vancouver now, right? So yeah, <laughs> it works out well. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so any in, in your time in Calgary, um, let's let's. Well, I'm going to dive right into One Hit Die because mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed that that series for sure. Um, let's uh, kind of dive in into how you got involved and and uh, uh, like I'm assuming you probably had to audition for that one or. Um, I did audition for that one, yeah. And oh, I wish I kind of had a clip, but that's that's okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't even think to grab one, but uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about the, your character, the show a bit? Um, just give folks watching a bit of an idea of uh, what they're missing out on and maybe where they might be able to check it out, if you know that info. Yeah, I, I do happen to have that info in my head. Um, the You can find the whole show on onehitdie.com. Um, so I auditioned for that in like the spring of 2013, maybe the winter of 2012, somewhere in there. Um, and I play uh, Gwendolyn Goodwin, a cleric who's got a huge stick up her butt and has to do everything the right way. Um, and she's insistent that she's the leader of the party. Um, so it's a it's a D and D mockumentary style web series. Um, where it's kind of got like that that office feel, but it's characters in a D and D setting who also like understand the mechanics of the game, and that's just how the world works. Um, which I think is just such a fun touch. I play a lot of D and D myself, so like a lot of these interactions are sort of familiar to me. It was um, it was really fun, like just bringing that side of side of things into into the show. Um, and that was one of my very first like onset experiences. And I had the, the, the great pleasure of working with, um, Julie Orton and Andrew Long and, um, Spencer Esbrooks is, is a phenomenal director. And I was so, so pleased and blessed to, to have an opportunity to work with him and have him direct me. It was great. Yeah, and well, you kind of answered my next question, which was, how was it working with Spencer? So, so. <laughs> you're, you're ahead of the game already. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, this is all, your show. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, and so how, how many seasons did that go on for? And then there was actually a, a film, I think, that was kind of followed up, I think, if I remember correctly on that. Um, I wasn't involved in later seasons because I had already moved out to Vancouver. Yeah. Um, so I was in season one um and i believe there's been two seasons since then um and then i think there's there's whisperings of a another project in the works okay um and i'll just throw the plug out for folks now like if you uh, if you haven't heard of spencer s brooks look him up he's got some cool stuff out there um that's my one plug <laughs> <laughs> Because it's about you, not him, right now. <laughs> <laughs> All eyes on me. <laughs> um, no, that's that's. I don't know if you ever watched the series. It was an online series called The Guild. I did I mean, watch that. It's on Netflix. It is. Oh yeah, that's right. They went on yeah. Netflix. I actually watched it before. I think even Netflix was around, to be honest, um, <laughs> or it was in its infancy anyway. Um, I mean, it's obviously a little bit different because that show is more based on video game than mm -hmm. it being a live scenario but uh it always kind of reminded me of that and I, th I thoroughly enjoyed both series as well um and hey that made some careers that one the guild it did it um, did so yeah the fun things of video games which by the way you are a gamer a bit right I, yeah i'm currently working my way through mass effect 2 for the second time and hollow knight okay i haven't played that one uh mass effect it's... i've done all of them way too often but, yeah <laughs> okay who's the ultimate question who's your favorite character um because if it's not garris then you're answering the question wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what i i i might start an argument here but Ooh, hot take incoming <laughs> i'm not that I have an issue with Garrus. I just never understood what the fascination was with him. And it's, to be honest, it's the same with Tally. Um, like, I know tons of people who love Tally, and I'm just like, eh. eh. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Rex guy or a Grunt guy. Um, I'm all mm. about the Krogans. So. That's, okay, that's fair. If yeah. if you were going to say, like, uh, I don't know, Liara, then it was going to be, I was going to have some fighting words ready for you, but. It's yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the ninja mancing that she likes to do. So, um, yeah, 
that's that's my because my wife plays as well so um that's always our joke it's like oh she's trying to ninja mance me again <laughs> um, but yeah now uh, hopefully some of the folks watching actually know what we're talking about <laughs> that's okay if they don't <laughs> um in which by the way folks say hi if you're you're watching i see there's a few people on um so okay so you're a garris fan that's good to know um do you have a favorite uh, version one, two, three, Andromeda. Have you played Andromeda? I have not played Andromeda. I watched my fiance play Andromeda and was like, I think I'm gonna not experience this game myself. Um, but I think my favorite uh, is Mass Effect Two because I've I've only played the entire trilogy once, with the exception of the second playthrough. But I didn't actually finish ME Three on my first playthrough. I just kind of fizzled out and then it didn't go back to it. Okay. Um, so now my round two, I'll go back and play ME3 and we'll see if my answer changes. Okay. No, that's fair. I, I'll be perfectly honest. Like the majority of the hours that I've got invested in this game, and I, it's a lot of hours, is definitely with <laughs> ME2. Yeah. Um, that's when you get to, to play with Morden, and Morden's great. Yeah. Morden's good too. Yeah. Yeah. I like Morden, um, especially when he starts singing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know, and again, like I know a lot. Like number three gets a lot of flack. Um, mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed it. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the end, which you know, since you haven't yeah, finished it yet, we're not going to get. Yeah. Well, that's but been it, spoiled for me already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess eh? it's been a few yeah. years. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I just never. I, I I liked the story up to that point, so I, I don't mind kind of replaying it. And graphically, it was all right. So, mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of. I'm kind of a graphics guy. That's why I struggle with number one and the functionality of ME. Well, have you played with any mods enabled? Um, there's a mod out there called A Lot of Textures, which kind of corrects a lot of that graphical stuff. And then, of course, BioWare just announced they're remastering the whole trilogy, so you may as well just wait for that. But yeah. If you cannot wait, A Lot of Textures. I've actually done some work with that modding team, done some voice work for them, so also a little plug there. Nice, nice. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and I, I I'm definitely kind of looking forward to seeing what it's all about. Cause I mean, I I know some of the concepts and be in behind, but I, I'd like to see a bit more about it. Mm -hmm. About the whole um, uh, re-release here. So we'll see. Um. Okay. Um. So do you have a favorite game? I guess would be the next another question. I have a soft spot in my heart for the uh. For the Spyro trilogy, the one with Elijah Wood and Gary Oldman. Okay. Um, it's just like so wonderful and it's got a multiplayer functionality. And my brother and I just spent hours playing the Spyro game. And it's just, he's a purple dragon. He's so cute. <laughs> it's just, there's nothing not to love about Spyro. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's, <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, and, are you console or PC? I am console because okay. I like to play horizontally. I need to lay out on the couch and play. <laughs> and you just can't do that on a PC. Even yeah, fair though, enough. Like, I recognize that PC is a superior gaming machine because it's far more accurate. It's uh, just like all around graphically better, more reliable, like less prone to glitching and breaking, but it's not comfortable. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I've spent a lot of because I'm a PC guy through and through, and uh, yeah, especially as I get older now, I'm getting like back issues playing video games. It's sad, mm -hmm. <laughs> makes me cry a little. <laughs> um, okay, I guess yeah, got a little sidetracked with video <laughs> games, but maybe we should just make this episode about video games. Um, <laughs> um, okay, no, we'll we'll move on. Uh, let's let's talk about another little project that uh, you and I were actually in together, um, and it's a film that was done by our fantastic film group at SATE, uh, which, for the folks that don't know, is the Southern Institute, Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, and they've got a great little film program. And a few years back, they did a short film for one of their projects called Dark Winter's Night, which was a very cool little uh, Western horror film. Um, so that was. A little bit of a different thing and it was fun to do and uh um yeah you and i both kind of had a little part in that that was very fun i th i found anyway um i don't know what yeah. your thoughts were on that but 
great group yeah. of people. Yeah, um, those uh, those students that we worked with, I, I ended up getting a chance to work with them on, on projects in the future and they were uh, like incredible hardworking people. So nice. Um, yeah. I'm still like friends with them on Facebook. Um, <laughs> yeah. And they're yeah. still, they're still busy. They're still plugging away doing their thing. It's, it's a really great thing to look at, but um, I, there's actually not a whole lot about that project that I remember in detail. I do remember that your character's name was Silas, but that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, funny, and the only reason I even remember that is I have a, another actual friend whose name is Silas, so I was like, okay, <laughs> there's my relation to it. But yeah, um, but yeah, no, I, I do remember you were uh, you were captured and you were in chains, and I, I remember that scene because I think I was there for the filming of that one as well. Yeah, I think we were also shooting in like a booster juice that was getting. No, it was beside a booster juice. That's it was right. An empty, empty piece of a strip mall beside a booster juice. <laughs> Yes. That we were just happened to be using as a as a studio, uh, because it was under construction. So they like painted the floors black, and it was yeah. so cold in there because the the heat wasn't on. And I was wearing like this little eighteen hundreds shift dress thing. Yes, it was very cold. Yeah, for sure. I I do remember that. Yeah, because um, yeah, we filmed that in. Oh, when did we film that? Was that a fall or? early winter type oh, scenario anyway yeah. I, yeah i remember one of my scenes was out in the field and you know a, a, a gunfight situation and laying in the snow i actually got sick after that as well oh no yeah i was sick for about a week after that <laughs> that's okay the things we do for our craft right i, I still have fun so <laughs> the sacrifices we make for our art right absolutely forgive my tea drinking um <laughs> yeah no and that was uh it was shortly after that i think you kind of moved to vancouver if i remember correctly i don't think it was yeah, too long that, after that that lines up like it would have been like six months a year later kind of thing yeah because um, yeah. i moved out to vancouver in in september um of 20, 20 2014 september of 2014 is when i made the move so Okay. We probably did Dark Winter's Night like like the November before or maybe the January or February. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know, January's sticking in my head, but I'm not sure. <laughs> That's okay. Not not an important fact at this point. Um <laughs> So when it comes to the actual move to Vancouver, um, like obviously your mom went with you, you already have family out there. So it must not have been I'm guessing it wasn't a uh you know, some people have a lot of anxiety making that kind of move. Uh, for you, it must not have been a big deal, or oh, it was, it was, it was, because, eh? um, um, like growing up, changing and moving was always like a traumatic experience for me. Um, it was like, I don't know, it's it wasn't something that I was ever comfortable with going on, like moving. So when the time came to move to Vancouver, I did have a lot of anxiety, but um. I I had read a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I had read that when I was like 14. Um, and, and so I've just kind of always tried to live at the philosophy of like figure out what it is that I'm afraid of. And if I'm, if the fear is like, I'm going to die and it's a legitimate fear, then yes, listen to it. But if it's anything other than I'm about to die, I should probably do it. Um, because I'm uncomfortable and because I'm afraid and living with with bravery is something that I always strive for so I moved to Vancouver because it scared me okay well that's fair yeah, yeah. you know um, confronting your challenges straight on no that's yeah. nothing wrong with that <laughs> um, so once you actually got there and uh, like it was the transition smooth once you got there and you got a little settled were you feeling much more relaxed after that or um, the transition was fairly, uh, fairly smooth because um, I spent the first two months helping my mom um, buy an apartment and renovate her apartment. Um, and then once we got her all settled in, then I moved out because she's in a she's in a small town just outside of Vancouver. She's in Abbotsford. Um, so then once she was settled, then I moved in um, into New Westminster um, and I, I happen to have a friend from Calgary who I had done some student films with 
also moved out to Vancouver at around the same time. So we ended up being roommates. So that kind of helped ease the transition a little bit. It was a friendly face, someone I knew, someone I trusted. Um, and he and I were able to like help each other with self tapes and, and feedback and, um, and we just got on really well. Um, and then it took a few months before I could sort of get a foothold in the Vancouver industry. Um, but yeah, once, once I got that little toe hold in, then everything just kind of snowballed from there. So ended up okay. being okay in the long run. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you kind of brought up a little point, which, um, you know, you were talking about self-taping and stuff like that. Um, how are you finding that with, with COVID right now um, in terms of, A, are you getting a, a lot of auditions to begin with? I, I think they're still fairly busy out in Vancouver right now. Um, yeah, um, things are slowing down for the holiday season. Um, yeah. But yeah, at um, right at the start of, of the lockdown process, um, I was able to get um, a voice agent um, and she's been absolutely phenomenal Brenda Campbell at premier management premier talent management um, she's been sending me all sorts of auditions um, including some on-camera work as well um, and I actually booked a commercial uh, back in May <laughs> um, so that was really really exciting but I've been yeah doing a lot of lot of auditioning for her um, because I have a home studio too, that's like extra desirable um, in COVID, especially right at the beginning. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's the end of my point. <laughs> okay, no, that's that's good. Um, now, for the folks that might not know, um, the differences between say a, a film audition and a audio audition. Um, well, a film audition, obviously, you're on camera uh, and voice, you're not. Um, but aside from that, the differences are really minuscule because um, it's still acting. Acting is acting, um, regardless of whether it's a microphone or a camera. It's just an apparatus that captures your performance. Um, so I would say the, the really only the big difference is like for voice auditions, I tend to wear pajamas. <laughs> Like, that's the Comfort. biggest difference. Um, yeah, I mean, like, there's there's little little things that that change, like on camera um, movement technique versus on mic movement technique. Like on camera, you only want to move within like this range of of what the camera sees, um, whereas like on the mic, you have this much space in front of you um, to kind of like play and move. Um, but like your face is still doing the same things. You still have to bring in your your emotionality, your intentionality, your authenticity, bring all of that stuff to the table and just like the microphone's like a foot away from you. So you just have to remember that like your listener is essentially a foot away from you. Whereas on camera, it's like three feet away, so. Right, okay. Um, so having said that, um, you you do obviously narrating for audiobooks. Um, can you tell us a little bit how you got into that to begin with? Because that's a bit different than some of the other voice work that's that gets done. Um, yeah. Um, audiobook narration, I love it. Um, I've now realized, like, this is kind of what I always wanted to do. Um, so I started this, this the audiobook journey back in 2016. Um, my mom and I started a, uh, a short fiction podcast called The Centropic Oracle. Um, and it was a really, really great way for me to cut my teeth on on narrating longer form projects because up to that point I'd only done like you know a couple auditions here and there for some stuff um but we'd uh we were buying short stories um written by written by authors all over all over the world most mostly in the United States but all over the world um and then I would narrate it edit the audio and then we would then we would publish publish it on our podcast um and then um, over time, I, I began to understand the editing process better and better. Um, my narration skills were improving. Um, I was able to narrate for longer and longer stretches. My character voices became a little more distinct. Um, and I started figuring out, like, okay, what are the things that I need to learn? What's, what's my next step? Um, and uh, then it wasn't until, gosh, it was... January of 2019 was when I did my first full-length audiobook, and 
I did it under a pseudonym and I'm not telling anybody what my pseudonym is. Um, but it was a royalty share project, which means that I make 50% of the profits of this book. And I think I've made $60 so far okay. for about maybe 30 hours of work. So it was, yeah, every actor has that initial project. Um, and especially in the audiobook world. Um, yeah, and I've since gone on to record over a dozen full length audiobooks, some of which are under a pseudonym that I'm not sharing. And then um, I've got, uh, I believe it's four, five, four, four books now under my, my under my full name. But um, <laughs> some of them are taking a while to become publicly available on Audible because Audible's facing a lot of delays right now, um, which okay. I'm not going to get into because I could easily talk about that for like five <laughs> hours. So we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> no, um, that's, that's fair too. Um, and, and like a lot of this information right now is, is available on your website. Like there's a few of your audio stuff on there i think right on your uh, website sorry yeah i've got i've got a lot of um audiobook samples up on my website i've got um examples of past work that i've done up on my website um and then you know contact forms and bios and everything a, an actor needs to promote themselves to the world absolutely i was uh, when i was looking at your website i was like oh yeah i, I think i need to make some changes to mine <laughs> yeah i haven't i haven't looked at it for a while and b yeah it's i mean it's functional. It's just, yeah, there's not a lot of in proper info there. I don't think yours is set up nicely. I think. Yeah, I did. Um, I did. Um, I did get a coach to help me uh, figure out how I wanted to lay out and prioritize my website. I've been playing with it seriously to make it like perfect since about April. Okay. All right. And so are you doing most of it yourself or like, I know. Yeah. You to... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm using Squarespace um, and it's, it's perfect for what I need. Um, I don't need really anything bigger or better, more complicated than that. Okay, well, that's fair. Um, let's talk about another little project that you've currently got going on that you're doing some voice for. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sojourn, is that, am I pronouncing that correctly for one thing? The Sojourn. Um, the, the Sojourn, okay. And uh, you're co-producing and starring in it, or in that's it. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that came to start and um, how you guys yeah. got together to do this and that kind of deal? And then we'll we'll show a little clip to, for folks as well. For, yeah, for absolutely. The teaser. Um, I was first brought onto this project as an actor um, because I knew I knew the um, the writer and and director of this show personally. He asked me to audition for a different character. Um, I auditioned for that character. It didn't quite land right, but he was like, I don't know, can you audition for this other person? So I auditioned for the main character um, and he was like, it's perfect. Can you please do it? Um, and then, um, you know, I, I was sending him a lot of messages talking about my process, how I break down a script. I was, uh, I, I did a little Twitter thread breaking down my script and, and talking about my acting process. And through the course of that, he was like, okay, like, I know you're a really good producer. I see the amount of work that you're putting into the acting. Do you want to like help me out a little bit with some, with some creative consultation work? And then I've just kind of like taken over <laughs> and I'm now a full co-producer um, because yeah, I just, I really want this project to succeed and and I've got the skills and, and the connections and the know-how to make it as good as, as like, I just want to bring my skills to it and, and help it succeed. Um, yeah, so it's a, uh, I'm just going to give a little log line for it. It's a audio, it's an audio drama, um, set in an alternate, um, universe, uh, alternate humanity. Um, the humans of the Tantalus cluster are in the midst of a great famine. They are running out of resources. Um, and a giant nebula has appeared in the night sky. Um, after doing some scientific surveys, they realize that this nebula is full of resources. So they're putting together this giant uh, multinational expedition to go to the nebula, harvest resources, and come back. However, the people of the Tantalus Cluster are at war with each other. There's lots of conflicts between them, and they have to like find a way to work together. Um, my character is Captain Cassandra Farron. She's a privateer 
um, which means that she doesn't like she's not a pirate but there are lots of pri pirates who are privateers um but she's she's a very like upstanding ex-military type person um and kind of needs to learn to relax a little bit um and stop being so scared of her past okay nice good intro let's uh let's just give this a little peek here I'm not coming on this expedition as a soldier. I'm happiest when it's just me and my crew. I've worked for a long time to put that part of my life behind me. Come on, Cass. Look at where we are. We're off the edge of the map here. This really is the unknown. This is Captain Cassandra Farron of the Privateer Corvette Guinevere. You can't outrun us and you've got nowhere to go. We fought the Union for 10 years. You know who these people are. The moment they're sure they have the upper hand, they'll turn on us. Welcome aboard this midday service to God only knows where. Please keep all hands and feet inside the spacecraft at all times. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. They see us. Incoming fire. Glancing hit, Skip. Superficial damage. Get the connection back. All hands brace for impact. Why is it that the one thing stopping us from reaching the future is always the past? The Sojourn, Season 1, Volume 1, coming August 1st, 2020. Very nice. I'm, I'm kind of curious, how long did it take to kind of put that together? Um, The show launched its its kickstarter to raise funds for its first season uh way back in 2018 i think um and then i was brought on uh in 2019 <clears throat> um we did a we did a little mini sewed um where it was kind of like a proof of concept thing um back in 2019 but um the first three episodes which were released as part of volume one in, on august um in august um that i would say that took a, a, a f probably more than six months um to to make all that happen um okay. the the whole recording process um polishing off the the scripts um and then obviously the sound design um the sound design is is the the biggest uh chunk <laughs> in the in the first few episodes really uh had to work extra hard because they had to establish what everything sounded like um, going forward, we now know what most things sound like, so it's just a matter of like putting them all together. Um, but uh, yeah, we we got a, a really excellent sound designer to handle um, the sound design. Uh, he also works on Hell of a Boss, which is a fairly popular web series. Um, so yeah, we're just we're so blown away by the quality of his work; it's really incredible. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean that that uh, you know for something that's just audio, I, I thought that was pretty cool. So, <laughs> you know. Um, and it, where can folks kind of check out what's been released so far? Anyway. Yeah. The um the show is available for sale on um, Google Books, Scribed, Audiobooks Now. It's coming soon to Audible, but Audible is telling us that it's been coming soon since July. So. Yeah, um, but uh, we've got a, a whole comprehensive list of, of where it can be bought on the sojournaudiodrama.com. Okay, I did not write that one down, so I'll try and remember that, folks. <laughs> sojournaudiodrama.com. There you go. Perfect. Um, surprisingly enough, we're a little over halfway here, um, so I'm just going to throw out the reminder to the folks that are watching. Uh, just say hi. If you have any questions for myself or, or Larissa, you know, pop them in. We'll have a look at them. And uh, thanks for joining us. Um, but your participation is always appreciated as well. So please do. Um, let's let's get into your your actual film side a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we touched a little bit on One Hit Die and stuff like that. But there's another series that you kind of worked on. Um, and this is after you moved to Vancouver, uh, I believe, Sham Therapy. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your roles in that? Like, I know you had a 
character role, obviously. But were you part of the production as well on that, or? Yeah. So um, a group of a group of people. Um, we we were all meeting at the Vancouver Public Library to to get together and just do some acting practice. Uh, we had booked a little studio and we were filming and giving each other feedback. And eventually we all looked at each other and we're like, what if we just write a web series? Um, which no actor in Vancouver has ever said to their group of friends ever <laughs> in the history of Vancouver actors. But we were like, yeah, let's make a web series. So we we got some, some books on um, how to write sitcoms and just bounced around a bunch of ideas. We all came up with our characters and tried to come up with some scenarios for what they could all do together. And we finally settled on um, two therapists open an, an office in some small town and which we don't know the name of and uh, struggle to, to keep their business afloat. Um, and their only two patients are a wannabe politician and his sister who refuses to like behave like a normal person. She is just constantly cosplaying and that's me. Um, so I, I helped with the production. Um, so I was mostly responsible for handling locations and, um, and uh, transportation type stuff, but we all took on a, a different part of the responsibility of, of producing this, this project. And, uh, yeah, we filmed our first, first two, I think, episodes, um, and then we raised a little bit more money on an Indiegogo and were able to finish out the rest of the season. Um, and then I've kind of stepped away from on-camera work, and I, I'm not sure if the show has continued without me. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's available on YouTube, Sham Therapy. Yes, and uh, I was actually watching a couple episodes earlier today as well. So. Um, yeah, so it's definitely available on YouTube. Um, so check out Sham Therapy. It's um, it's actually spelled s dot h dot a dot m dot. <laughs> so check that on <laughs> on YouTube. Um, and actually, um, if you, if you're all right with it, I'll, I'll actually share this one episode I was kind of watching, which is uh, I, I don't know if it was. It's not the introductory to you, right? It's not the, no, it's it's not my character introduction. My character was introduced in, I believe, the second episode. Second episode, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so this is from episode 11. It's called The Fickle Philly. And uh, it's it's fun, I think. I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, <laughs> all right, let me just quickly set this up here because I didn't actually have it preset. There, it'll only take a second. There we go. I'm at an absolute loss. Directing all my hate at my brother, repeatedly throwing myself at my oblivious therapist, repeatedly, without so much as a how's your father in return, and getting outraged at everything I read online has done nothing to make me feel better, Doctor. And if that weren't enough... Wait. Ugh. Who the bloody hell are you? I'm Edward. I work here revolving door of buffoonery around these parts. Well, can you help me? I'm more of administrative. My parents have denied me my only true happiness. <clears throat> well, since you asked, they disapprove of my cosplay and have forbidden me to attend Game of Anime StarCon. Again, I'm new here. <laughs> but, maybe I can help? Are you seeing anyone? Oh, devil, isn't it obvious? I clearly wear my loneliness like a scarlet letter, broadcasting to the world. Keep moving, people! Okay, um... And what's it like when you receive attention from men of any kind? Well... Excuse me, you left your lights on. Even the disabled are into me. Thank you, kind sir. Hey lady, hey lady. It's like a kaleidoscope of color, just for me. Email me. 
practically beating them away with a stick. I... I don't know what to say. Don't you go getting infatuated with me. What was your name? Eddie. Edward. People call me Eddie. My stepdad calls me Numbnuts. My friends call me Houseboy. Because... <laughs> Never mind. Edward. What a regal sounding name. <clears throat> Till next we meet, Edward. <laughs> it's sham therapy. I don't know, I still have fun watching that a second time, so. <laughs> yes, I loved how you were beating them off with a stick. Yes. That was great. A walking stick. Uh, well, yes, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no, that was, like, was it as fun to shoot as it was to watch? I guess that's the question. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, having... Shooting shooting this show was was a lot of fun because um, we'd already been like playing together for for so long. We already all knew each other pretty well. Um, the guy who played Edward Connor was actually a relatively new addition to the show at that point, um, and he fit right in with the rest of us. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to also let you know that I don't know if you if you pop open on your right side, you I think you have a comments bar there. Um, we did yeah, get a comment. I got. Oh, yeah, somebody else who enjoyed one hit die. <laughs> so thanks for the comment. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let's read. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Um, oh, um, the, the the question that you know a lot of actors kind of get asked: um, What's your training? Like, what? Like, obviously, you took some drama in high school. Um, did you do anything beyond high school? Um, like, are you a workshop person? You an actual formal school person? Um, I did not go to formal schooling. Um, it, it just didn't seem worth the debt to me. Um, but I do believe in the importance of continuing education. I'm constantly taking online courses. Um, I, um, after high school, I did a year at Company of Rogues in Calgary, uh, which, which offered some really great um, acting courses. It taught me an awful lot that I, I still carry forward with me now. Primarily, it taught me um, confidence as an actor, knowing that I am capable of, of being an actor. Um, and since moving out to Vancouver, I've been doing um, primarily the Actors Foundry, um, which has taught more of like the nitty gritty specifics of how to break down a scene and and how to break down a character and 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 um and perform really to the to the best of my ability and, and dig down into the nuances um but i've also been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people i've been doing some business coaching i've been doing some um, audiobook specific coaching um and then i also have um some online courses that i take for like social media marketing and um software skills like uh the, the software that i that i use for audio recording reaper i constantly play around with that and try and figure out and learn how to use it better um but yeah um primarily i just do online and one-on-one -on -one nowadays okay yeah and especially now right it's a bit different as well because yeah. yeah covid <laughs> <laughs> that nasty covid yeah it's definitely changed our thought processes on a lot of things yeah. um <clears throat> I was kind of when I was going through your website. I was looking at some of the uh, some of the other training. Like you've got, um, and this is the one thing. Like I haven't really talked about this too much on on a lot of the other shows. Is some of the other little nuanced training things. Like you've got some uh, stage combat skill training. You've got uh, how to handle handguns. That, those kind of things, right? And those are the things we don't. I don't know. I, I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about that and. Uh, I, I kind of want to get your take on a the importance of getting that kind of stuff done, and uh, um, do you wait for when an opportunity, like if you've got a role coming up where you need to handle a gun, do you wait for that opportunity, or do you do that like way beforehand, just so it's on your resume right away? I used to believe that 
you should try and load up your resume with as much skills as you can manage. Um, I've kind of revised my stance now. I think it's only worth putting stuff on your resume unless you're actually passionate about it. Um, so when I was doing the stage combat stuff, I was doing that because I found it interesting. Um, it, it initially started as, oh, it's good to have on your resume. But as I was going through it, I was like, this is really cool. I just want to learn more about this world. Um, but eventually, like the classes that I was taking ended up being kind of prohibitively expensive. So I had to let that go. Um, so I just, I now put a focus on embracing the skills that interest me and making that a part of my focus. Um, that way you can add it to your resume. You know for sure that you can do it, which is huge. Casting directors hate when actors say they can do something, but they can't. Um, and it also, like, it's fulfilling on a on a creative level. Like, it makes you feel like a wh more whole person. And that, I think, is far more valuable than just having a line on your resume saying that you can you can do a skill. Like, I, you can juggle. Like, yeah, I can juggle, but I don't like to juggle. So <laughs> why did I, why did I learn how to juggle if I don't have any joy in doing it? It's not like it's going to get me that much work because I don't practice it enough. So if you're going to try and put a skill on your resume, make sure that it's a skill that matters to you because otherwise you won't practice it and you won't be good enough to even have bothered putting it on your resume. That's my opinion. I think that's a fair opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, man, time is just flying here. Um, so we're, we're down to the last 15 minutes. I do have a couple more questions for you. And then mm -hmm. uh, if you're up for it, we can try a phrase challenge, as I like to call it, technically charades. Um, um, I, I guess the one of the other questions is, well, okay, we'll start with this one. Do you have an actor or an actress that you, you, whether it be voice actor or film or whatever, that you uh, you really want to work with or you really want to meet and, and collaborate with? Um, or have you already met that person? Um, yeah, I, I did meet that person. Unfortunately, he's now passed. Uh, it was Garrick Winston, who was one of the first people on your show. Uh, we were in, in the middle of making a project together to collaborate on. Um, and then I'd kind of like shelved it and put it to the side. And then He's since passed, um, so I'm, I've now resurrected that project and I'm starting to work on it again. Um, so, yes, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, I, I get that, mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting because he had his hand in so many different projects. Right, he was all um, over the place. It was wonderful. He, he really was, and and that's just the kind of guy he was. And it, similar to yourself, right? There's been a few shows now being kind of resurrected um that he had his hand in right so it's 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 interesting to see his works still continuing even though it's yeah. been two years now and it's still there's still stuff coming out um, yeah, which i think is great he's not really gone <laughs> no he's not no and uh, he he was such a strength within the community that uh I, yeah i don't think he'll be fading away anytime soon so <laughs> um okay no that's that's it that's good. That's interesting. You know, I think most people were probably expecting, you know, a major celebrity name, but I think that's a fantastic name to mention. So um, <laughs> great. And I guess the next one is uh, future goals for yourself. Um, where do you see yourself in, say, five, ten years? I need to redo that exercise. It's actually been, um, <laughs> it's been a few months since the last time I did it. Um, but some of the things that I'm wanting to accomplish for myself is I want to get this project that I had started with Garrick, um, expanded into a feature film and direct it, um, and like actually produce this thing, um, get it, get it in the can. That's, that's one thing. Um, a more immediate goal is, um, my fiance and I are looking at buying a condo and I want to build my own like full soundproof booth. Um, in that in that space so I'm looking into like business loans and, and figuring out how I'm going to approach that um, but I also want to uh, I want to go to recording 20 finished hours of audiobook a month um, in order to have that as like a sustainable full-time job for me okay um, 
we do have another question here, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to actually show this on screen so you can maybe have a look at that and let you reply to that. Yeah. So this is a fantastic let's uh, question. Let's read. Um, how do you get through an audiobook without any mistakes? You don't. <laughs> um, I have a really, really high accuracy rate, and that's because I've been recording and reading fiction several times a week for over four years now. Um, but even still, I make lots and lots and lots of mistakes. Eventually, you train your brain to recognize words and sentences in, in full flow. I find that being able to read music has helped me a lot with um, being able to record audiobooks because your brain is trained to read ahead um, while you're also saying or playing what's what's directly in front of you. So you can kind of see two things at once. Um, but when you make a mistake, I use what's called punch and roll. It's a really fantastic technique. There's lots of um, lots of YouTube videos out there on, on how to turn that function on in whatever software you use. But the the main idea of punch and roll is when you make a mistake, you stop recording, you move your playhead to the moment before or the sentence before your mistake, and you start recording again, and you just record over your mistake. And that cuts down your editing time by like half, um, I found. Um, and it's just, it's it's a really great way to, to flow through. And most larger publishers or even independent publishers um, expect punch and rolled audio. Okay. Hopefully that uh, that answers the question. Okay. I, I don't know if you saw that comment, but I'll just I'll pop that back up there. Um, yeah. Great yeah, something question. Else oh, yeah. to, something else to keep in mind with with audiobooks, uh, let's let's read is for each finished hour of audio, it takes about six hours of work. So when you're calculating like how much time to schedule in a month, uh, figure out okay how much how many man hours how many labor hours do I have, and then divide that by six, and then you'll know how many finished hours you can finish in a month. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Math. Right, yeah, no, that's some good <laughs> info there. Uh, good learning experience for me as well. <laughs> so, yeah. um, although, uh, to be honest, I never, never thought I would actually get into that side of it. I've always enjoyed the voice work, um, which actually brings up another question: Is um, mm -hmm. have you you haven't really done any voice work for video games? I don't think, right? Not yet. The closest I've come is that Mass Effect mod that I was telling you about earlier. Um, right, but I'm like. I want that. I want it. <laughs> yes, right. I, I was kind of wondering. That was going to be my next question: Is is that something you even want? But okay, yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's read. has got another quick question here. So let's just pop that up. Yeah, long hours in the vocal booth. Um, I actually only allow myself to do two hours at a time, and even then, I'll take one or two breaks. Um, but the biggest thing is like when you feel yourself starting to get tired stop <laughs> take a take a, a like you know five ten minute break go to the bathroom do some stretching um i do some gentle humming to kind of like calm things down a little bit um because your vocal cords start um, as they slap together they start getting inflamed so you need to rest them um so yeah some gentle humming some deep breathing exercises yoga stretching uh lots and lots and lots of water before you go into the booth um, because like drinking water in the booth, that's all well and good, but it doesn't actually help you in the moment. It helps you in the future. So always drink a lot of water before you plan to record, like an hour before you record, drink a bunch of water. Yeah. Okay. Awesome tips. Tips everywhere. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Yeah. So we're kind of in the last five here. Um, I think we have enough time to do one round each, maybe. Let's do it. Our little phrase challenge. I did send you a link in the private chat that should be on your right side of the screen. Yeah, I got it. Um, so I'll let you kind of look at that, and I'll kind of explain for the folks watching what we're going to kind of do here. Um, so I, we haven't actually done this for a few episodes, so this will be fun. Um, this is what I call the phrase challenge, which more or less is charades. Uh, she and myself... Larissa and myself have a link to what's called a phrase generator, and uh, it generates condom or 
goodness, random <laughs> phrases or common ones is what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I can't see what she's looking at. She can't see what I'm looking at. And she'll choose one. I'll choose a phrase. I'm very much like charades. You know, we can kind of go three words, first word, that kind of scenario. No verbal cues, anything like that. And we will try and act it out for ourselves to guess and also the viewers the, yourself to kind of potentially guess as well. The one thing I do want to bring up is there is a bit of a delay from the time Larissa and I are talking to the time folks actually get to see it, especially through Facebook. Um, there's like a, up to a 10 second delay. So even when you and I are kind of uh, done, Larissa, we'll give it a few seconds for people to kind of chime in and then we can reveal what our answer is if we haven't guessed what it is. Um, and right. we have 30, uh, sorry. Yeah, I think I bumped it up to a minute last time to kind of do it because 30 seconds was just way too fast. <laughs> um, yeah, it goes by super fast. Um, yeah, I'm just going to share that. I'll just share that real quick with Let's Read. Um, I'm going to set up my timer here. And I, I will let you go first because, uh, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> right. Gentlemanly. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> perfect. So when you're ready, um, I will give you the full screen and then I will start the clock and then you can go. Um, okay. If you have any questions for me before we start, just let me know. And uh, we'll go from there. So you let me know when you are ready. Okay, let's just do it. Ah. Let's do it. All right, I'm giving you full screen and go. Go, okay. Um, rain, um, sparkly, um, hammer, uh, drumming, <laughs> um, Flower, um, growth, expand, um, enlarge, uh, not grow. Um, <laughs> hmm. Flicking, um, punching, fighting. Ooh. But, yeah, I'm still thinking that's hammering. Um, hmm. And that is our minute. Um, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's yeah. I don't know. I, I find that super, super tough. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds if anybody wants to kind of chime in and, and uh, take their guess on uh, what we were doing there. And, uh, and if not, then she will announce what it was. You were very close to being on the right track, but... I was like, how do I, how do I like push it through to make sure it's clear? Yeah, no, understood. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any guesses at this point? Oh yeah. So chopping, uh, tree, wood, chopping, chopping wood. Um, so we had a few guesses from. All right, I think we've given enough time. Um, you can you can announce what it was. Beating around the bush. Beating around the bush. <laughs> like beating uh, over here, and there's the bushes over here. But it's like, how do you communicate a bush? I don't know. Yeah, no, see, right? <laughs> but when you hear it, it's like, oh, it's so obvious. It's like, duh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How could I not guess that? <laughs> All right. Um, Yggdrasil is somebody else's <laughs> guest. <laughs> That's awesome. I can I could totally see how you would get there. Right. <laughs> That's or awesome. Tentacle spider. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank All you right. for the guesses. That that was awesome. Um, I guess I'll I'll take my turn here for yeah. quick. Embarrass oh. yourself now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, reset my clock here. Um, Here we go. And here we go. All right. 
Five. Oh, five words. Oh. <laughs> um. Uh. Shoulder. Second word. <laughs> Taste sample chew mm. shoulder <laughs> shoulder chew that doesn't make sense oh like the mistake like the little floaty mm. bits <clears throat> uh, like hair on your tongue and see like that time is done. Um, wow, that's so fast. <laughs> right? I know it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't know how else I could have done that. That's okay. We'll we'll give it a few <laughs> seconds. Let people uh, kind of guess that one out, and uh, see what happens. Oh, I guess I can bring you back on screen. There we go. Um, ah, I always have fun with these things. <laughs> but it does. It does go fast. It, it goes amazingly fast. And then, yeah. It's not very often we get to get the or I get the answers right anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, a chip on your shoulder, of yes, course. Yes, correct. Well ah, done. I, I thought I don't know how this is a chip. Oh, like a potato chip. Yeah, I was thinking a potato chip. Oh. Right? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And then that's why I thought, oh, crack the cup and yeah. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. like, what else can I do for chip? I'm like, ah, I don't know. Wow. Okay. That. <laughs> Tells me an awful lot about what my eating habits have been because I assumed that you were eating like a vegetable or something. <laughs> when did I turn well, into fair. not a potato chip person? I don't know. <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, right? It's It could have been anything. You know, I could have been, yeah, you know, eating nuts. But uh, <laughs> yes, both Let's Read and, and Charlie, I hope it's Charlie, not or Charlie, I'm not sure. Um, apologies for that. But you are both correct. A chip on your shoulder, so well done. Um, having said that, we are out of time. Um, so that is the end of the episode. But I do have one announcement to make before we uh, log off here. Um, <clears throat> over Should the I last several. You, you can, please. Let's slap that. Perfect. <laughs> Winner of our co host contest, which has been going on for the last several weeks. Um, and we'll, uh, the winner will be co-hosting the show with me on the season finale, which will be December 12th. Um, and that winner is Jin Fedotov. So, Jin, if you're watching, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be chatting quite soon because we'll have to review some stuff and go through some stuff and get prepped for the final episode there. So I will be in touch. Um, so, and again, thank you for the folks that uh, sent in videos, everything else. Uh, definitely appreciate that. And uh, who knows, we might do it again. I don't know. Although I do have somebody who would love to be a full-time co-host. So, <laughs> um, oh, thank and thank you. Let's read for, for both watching and for um, participating and asking questions. That, that was great. And, and yeah, hopefully that, that information, questions. yeah, hopefully that information helps. And uh, next week, uh, we have a guest, and her name is uh, Carolyn Bridget Kennedy, um, originally from Calgary, and is now making uh, waves down in L.A., so we'll have a chat with her next week. And uh, so stay tuned for that week, that one. Uh, so thanks again. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we will see you next week.